Hi, everybody. Um, good afternoon and welcome to the webinar from the Ohio Alliance and Sexual Violence. Um, my name is Kelly Becker, she, her, and her pronouns. I'm the Community <coughs> Assistance Coordinator. Um, our presenter today is Kelly Shradia. She's a youth advocate for the YWCA of Northwest Ohio. As we begin today's webinar, I'd like to start by sharing a few announcements with you. The webinar will last no longer than an hour, and we hope you will enjoy, enjoy it and join in and participate. Throughout the presentation, please feel free to type your questions and comments in the questions box, and we'll do our best to address them several times throughout the presentation or at the end. If you are experiencing any technical difficulties with audio on your computer, you may also listen in on your telephone by dialing the number in your registration email. This webinar will be recorded and you will receive an email with a link to the recording within 24 hours. It will also be posted to our website in the members section. Please feel free to share this with others at your agency. Lastly, we would greatly appreciate it if you could take a minute to complete the evaluation at the end of the webinar. It will be available in a window that will open up at the conclusion of the webinar, as well as in the follow-up email. Now I'm gonna turn it over to our presenter, Kelly. Hi, everybody. I'm hoping everybody can hear me. I'm guessing that everybody can hear me. Um, yeah, so my name is Kelly Shradia. I am a youth advocate with the YWCA of Northwest Ohio. Um, I did want to let people know, however, that I am not uh, doing this for, like, I'm not representing the YWCA in this capacity. I am doing this on my own time. So I do teach, uh, let me move some stuff down so I can read what I'm seeing. I do teach uh, comprehensive sex education in Toledo Public Schools. We are primarily a pregnancy prevention um, program, but we have been, and especially during this time that we're doing right now, where obviously the schools are closed, um, we are working on curriculum uh, revisions. So we are working more on implementing a sex, although we are comprehensive, uh, we are working on implementing a sex positive, LGBTQ plus inclusive and consent aspects to our lessons. And um, I have, because I have so much uh, background in working with, um, with sexual assault and working with consent, um, I have taken the lead on adding consent into our, into our lessons. So we do teach uh, comprehensive sex education in the sixth grade in the seventh grade and the eighth grade, and then we do it in all of the health classes um, in Toledo Public Schools. So we are all over the place and we are starting in sixth grade and we are starting consent in sixth grade. We also um, do a puberty session as well. And then we have an after school program called the Teen Outreach Program, and that is where the mindfulness training came in. So we started getting trained in mindfulness um, as a calming technique for our students. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you work with um, teenagers, but um, the science is pretty definite that, that teenagers think with a section of their brain called the amygdala because their frontal lobe is not um, fully developed yet. So we are working, it, it, the amygdala is the <clears throat> excuse me, is the part of the brain where it, it's um, it controls impulsiveness, okay? So that's why teenagers are more, more impulsive and that's why they don't think very quickly when they, when they get really angry, they go right into crisis mode when they get angry. So we started talking about how we can use mindfulness as a, as a technique to calm these kids down before they go right into fight mode. OK, because the, the most common um, we know that the most common thing when somebody is scared or when they're challenged is fight or flight. And a lot of these kids automatically go into fight mode. So we have started to introduce mindfulness into our after school program, which is called the teen outreach program. I teach the teen outreach program uh, at Bowser High School. So I am the Bowser High School um, top facilitator. And then I also do the after, uh, I'm sorry, I also do the sex education at Bowser and all of the Bowser feeders as well here in Toledo. So I am also, I was asked to do this because on top of the mindfulness um, training that I have, uh, I am also a former outreach advocate for the YWCA Rape Crisis Center. Um, at the time that I was the 
rape crisis advocate or the outreach advocate, we had three staff members. So I was in charge of the legal advocacy. I did all of the hospital, almost all of that. I shouldn't say all of it, but almost all of the hospital call follow up. Um, I ran all of the support groups. And at the time I was running one, two, three, four, I think four support groups. And some cases I was running five support groups um, a week. And in hindsight, it's it's been quite a few years since um, since I was working in the rape crisis center. But in hindsight, I think uh, mindfulness would have been something that I, I wish I had researched at the time, that I wish I had um, been able to use uh, in my support groups, because I think it would, for those of you who maybe have support groups or you work with survi survivors, um, mindfulness can be invaluable. And it also can be invaluable uh, for you as well to take a few moments out of your day um, to really be in the moment. And um, yeah, so we're gonna go into that uh, right now. And like uh, Kelly said, if you have any questions, like when I am going through this, um, just make sure you ask and Kelly will jump in and let me know um, if you wanna ask anything, I'm, I'm here for you. All right, so what is mindfulness? Okay, uh, not everybody really knows what it is. Or, you know, when you think of it, I'll be honest, when I first heard about mindfulness, when they were first starting to train us or talk about training us in it, I was, I had in mind um, just sitting on the floor, uh, cross-legged with your back sitting up straight, you know, holding your hands like, let me see if I'm doing it right. I can't even see myself. I'm holding my hands like this and, and you're just meditating and that's what you're doing. That's what I thought mindfulness was. And I have tried to meditate in the, in the past, um, but that doesn't always, my mind just wanders. I mean, it just goes, it just goes all over the place. Okay. So it's not just meditation. There's a lot of different things that you can do um, to be mindful. Uh, yoga is an excellent way. I don't know if anybody's ever tried yoga, but you can find very small uh, yoga sessions on YouTube, um, it, like anywhere you can find those. All right, so this is what dictionary.com, this is what their definition of it is. So a mental state achieved by focusing one awareness on the present moment while calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and body sensations, and it's used as a therapeutic technique. So what is that? What does that even mean? All right. It doesn't mean forget your problems. It doesn't mean not to focus on what's going on in the world. I think right now it's impossible to not focus on what's going on in the world, right? Um, it's impossible to forget your problems. I mean, we are dealing with a lot right now. Um, how can we make sure we're taking care of ourselves mentally? How can we make sure that we're taking care of ourselves um, physically? Okay. Like I said, mindfulness is a way, it, it doesn't mean forget what's going on. It's a, it's a tool to calm yourself down while acknowledging that yes, these problems exist. Yes, they are there, but I am going to quietly, I'm gonna acknowledge in the moment that yes, um, I am, my, my, I'm working from home and my children are in the next room and they need me to help them with schoolwork. Or yes, I haven't seen my parents in three weeks and I'm worried about them, okay? It doesn't mean forget that. All right, what it means is you're gonna acknowledge that yes, that is what's happening. They are there, those problems are there. And I'm going to take those problems, I'm gonna quietly put them aside and I'm going to take a moment to focus right on me. Um, sorry if I pause sometimes, just to let you know, I'm very, very used to working with teenagers. So I'm always having a back and forth with them. So not having people respond to me is something that's a little bit new to me because I'm usually like interacting with kids, you know, 
uh, for an hour. So, <clears throat> but mindfulness is the basic human ability to be fully present, um, aware of where we are, what we're doing, and not get completely overwhelmed by what's going on around us. And it's something that uh, every person can do. And you can do it once a day when you wake up in the morning. You can do it when you have a moment. You can do it when you're sitting on the toilet because that might be the only time that you're able to have a few minutes alone, especially if you are working from home with kids right now. Um, that might be the only moment you have alone. So you can even do it when you're sitting on the toilet and it can take 30 seconds or a minute uh, or five minutes, however long you want it to be, okay? So we're going to do a couple guided meditations in a, in a few minutes. We're gonna do one about in the middle of the session and then we're gonna do one toward the end. But first I wanted to talk about physical and mental benefits to mindfulness. So some things to know again about mindfulness is it's, it's, this is not something that is like not obscure or it's exotic. Like I said, um, when I first thought about mindfulness, I thought it was going like this and ohm and like not thinking it was just um, meditation. It's something that you already have the capacity to do. You have the capacity to be present. It doesn't require you to change who you are, okay? Um, and it's also scientifically demonstrated to benefit you. So there is science behind this, okay? And some of the science behind this is that it does increase the calming hormones of melatonin and serotonin. Um, it can also decrease the, uh, it can also decrease um, the stress hormone of cortisol, right? Um, it can increase your concentration if you take a five minute mindfulness break. And it doesn't, it doesn't really even have to be um, five minutes, you know, even one minute can help increase your, uh, your concentration. Um, it reduces anxiety. Is anybody feeling anxious lately? I mean, like every moment of every day, it seems like. Um, every time you turn on the TV, every time you uh, go on Twitter and maybe are reading the news, um, this can help you during those times where you feel like you're, you're so overwhelmed, your anxiety uh, is out of control, okay? And part of the reason that it reduces your anxiety is that it can reduce your blood pressure, it can lower your heart rate, it can help with depressive symptoms. Now, um, obviously, I'm not a, a doctor, so um, I know that depression is an illness. So uh, this will not take the place of any kind of medication or anything like that, um, but it, it can help. But I don't want to say that this is a cure for depression, okay? And it can also help you manage um, chronic pain. And of course, it improves your, um, and it can improve your uh, attention span. Do we have any questions by any chance, Kelly, before I move on? Come in so far, we can give it a moment in case anyone has any questions or you're welcome to keep going, whatever you feel good to you. I'll give it a moment to let me just like organize my, my notes a little bit. Okay. Just to make sure I have everything I need. And if everyone has any questions for Kelly, feel free to type them in the question box. I love answering questions. <clears throat> so, all right, I will move on, but if you do, um, like, feel free. All right, so, like I said, it lowers your stress levels, right? Um, learning how to control or minimize the effects of stress on your body and mind is important to your overall health and well being. Um, so, there is there are clinical trials, there is science to back this up that had small improvements in stress um, and mental health. Uh, like I said, it can help you banish temporary negative feelings if it feels too overwhelming. Um, it can improve your attention span and enhance. These are all like these are these these all have science backing them up. Um, and I can send out some of the some of the science um, surrounding that if anybody is interested. All right, so what are our concerns right now? Um, if anybody wants to type up, 
the major concerns that they're having right now, or I can actually, <laughs> I made a list of probably what most people are like really dealing with. So these are the ones that I was thinking that most people are dealing with. So concerns about your families, um, having to work from home. I'm not sure how many people are dealing with having to work from home for the very first time ever, uh, but that is something that I am dealing with right now. Um, my day consisted of going into the office, getting the materials ready that I need to teach, and then going into the classroom and teaching for sometimes three to five hours a day. I was straight teaching in health classrooms. That is what my day consisted of. And then when I was not teaching, I was in my office preparing for the teen outreach program, which is an after school program. And when I wasn't dealing with the teen outreach program, I was in my office trying to plan service learning projects because we take our kids on a field trip every year for a service learning project. So sitting down in front of a computer for eight hours a day, it's something that um, I've never done before, okay? So, and I would imagine a lot of people are having to deal with that, with that as well. And I do not have children, but my elderly parents live with me right now. <clears throat> so I am worried about being home all day and the stress that that's causing me mentally and physically on my body, because I'm being very sedentary right now, as opposed to walking around a classroom all day and talking with uh, youth all day. Now I am at home um, and I have like three people in my house to talk to and that's besides FaceTiming people. I'm sure a lot of you are dealing with the same things, especially when it comes to your kids. Um, so now we have to deal with homeschooling our kids. I'm sure a lot of people are worrying about older family members. Um, not even older family members, because as more information comes out in the news and stuff like that, we're learning that this is affecting everyone. I'm sure people are dealing with the uncertainty of your jobs, not just adjusting to working from home, but worrying about losing our employment or a partner losing their job. Um, my husband got laid off, so we are, he will be going on unemployment, but we are working with my income right now. So some of you may have partners or family members that are now unemployed, right? Um, which brings us to a huge worry that puts stresses on most relationships, which is worrying about money. So now all of us are gonna have to worry about how we are going to pay. I mean, rent is due tomorrow. How are we going to have to pay for rent? And on top of all of these stressors, personally and professionally, we also have the unique additions of concern for our clients. So if you are an advocate, you are not only worried about your family, you're not only uh, worried about your job or your coworker, but you're also going to be worrying about your clients. And I worry, um, the same thing because I work with teens. I have a lot of seniors who don't know if they're going to graduate. They are losing out on prom. They are losing out on all of those things that you do your last year of high school. Um, on top of we have students whose families have tested positive for this disease. So we're talking to these kids about how to deal with that. So what unique stressors do we have as advocates? So a big stressor, I think that a lot of us probably have, uh, especially um, is keeping boundaries, right? Keeping boundaries with our clients because we know that they need a lot more um, than we can give them, right? We also, I don't know about you, but when I worked for Rape Crisis Center, um, unless I was on call, I would keep work at work, okay? I would never take my work home with me, of course, unless I was on call. And then I had to be mindful of the fact that I could get called in at any moment. Um, but how do you keep work at work when your work is at home, 
right? Uh, confidential, I didn't write this down, but confidentiality issues. How do we keep things confidential? Again, when, when, you're, when you're working from home, uh, maybe for the first time. Worrying about survivors. Uh, survivors thrive on reliability. This is something that they cannot control. So they may be reaching out uh, to you for more help than maybe you are able to, to give them. And that can lead to, I'm gonna go into the um, guided meditation in a second, but this leads to vicarious trauma, uh, burnout and compassion fatigue. So can mindfulness help us combat vicarious trauma? Can it help us combat burnout? And can it help with compassion fatigue? And the answer to that is all, I wouldn't be doing this if the answer wasn't yes. So of course, of course it can. I'm gonna go back up um, and I'm, I'm just wondering if anybody has ever tried mindfulness in a support group or with a survivor before. So we do it with our youth, um, but back when I was doing support groups with survivors, um, this is not something that I ever did. So I did wanna place a question out there if anybody wants to share or anything like that. Go ahead, if you have a response to that, go ahead and type it in the questions box and I'll give that information over to Kelly. Um, Kelly, there was a comment on here. Um, someone stated that I've experienced an increased fatigue being home and unable to go anywhere. It's under stimulating for the brain. I'm hoping, hoping that practicing meditation and mindfulness can be helpful with that as well. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely can. Um, I can't say that I am experiencing under stimulation because I have things coming at me from all over the place, but I can definitely understand. Um, it's really a calming technique and it's really something to bring you back to uh, improve your attention and bring you back into the moment, into what you're doing. And it, it's a calming, it's a calming technique. Um, like I said, it's not a cure for, for depression, uh, but it can help with that with that anxiety. I also have anxiety that where I feel like I'm doing a lot, like I have a lot to do, but is it enough? Like, is it enough for, because we've never worked from home before. So I don't know if what I'm doing is, are they gonna be okay? Can I justify working eight hours a day? Can I, are they gonna be okay with this? Are the funders gonna be okay with this? So, Part of my, when I feel like I'm not stimulated enough, what happens is I start thinking about those things. Like, am I, really, do I have, do I actually have enough to do? Even though I know I have enough to do, sometimes I'll just stop for a moment and be like, do I really have enough to do? So doing a small, a short, like mindfulness breathing exercise um, can bring you back and calm you down. So I would hope so. And I'm gonna, we're gonna do some of them, okay? Do we have any other responses? I have not had any other responses come in. So it looks like okay. maybe you have not done this in the support group setting. Okay, yeah, maybe you haven't. So I'm gonna guide you through a five minute meditation that maybe I, I saw this one and with my experience doing support groups, um, I thought this was kind of a good one to do uh, that you might be able to do with clients. All right, okay. So, and then we're gonna do another one for you, for the attendees at the end, okay? Let me get my stopwatch going because um, it has me. Okay, all right, so the first thing, I, and I'm <clears throat> gonna try and do my most soothing voice so I'm not like yelling. Okay. Okay, so, and I just had um, my mom walk through the door. So working, you know, working from home with your parents, <laughs> living with you. That's a whole a whole new, but she's it's been it's been awesome. It's been actually pretty great. All right. So I'd like you to get comfortable in your chair and relax. Okay. You don't uh, need to sit up straight. You don't need to um, you know you don't need to put your hands and you just I want you to be comfortable. Okay. So just get comfortable in your chair and relax. Take a deep breath. Place your feet flat on the floor. Really feel your feet in contact with the ground underneath you. And just take a, a few more deep breaths, <clears throat> like this for a minute, okay? Feel your feet on the ground. 
Just take a few deep breaths. So I'd like you to start by focusing on your toes. So scrunch them up, scrunch them up real, real tight. Scrunch them. And then release them. Release your feet, your toes. All the while, just keep breathing. You can close your eyes or not. Now kind of scrunch up your calf muscles and your ankles and your thighs. Scrunch them up. Now I want you to release your ankles. Relieve your calf muscles and your knees. Keep breathing. Scrunch up your thigh muscles. Now release them. Now remember, any thoughts that you might have, they're floating in front of your mind, okay? You're, you're starting to wander, and that's okay. Say to yourself, this is okay. It's okay that I'm thinking these things, but I'm gonna kind of wrap them in a bubble, and I'm gonna let them float away from me. Now scrunch up your back end and your pelvis area. Notice maybe you are scrunching up your back as well. Make sure that your back is relaxed, but you can scrunch up your back end and your pelvic muscles. Now slowly release them. Breathe in deeply. And as you breathe out, slowly relax and release any tension that you may also have in your back. And then keep breathing. Now scrunch up your shoulders, lift them up, lift them up high, and then release them. Release it completely. Now it's going to be time to relax your neck and your jaw. So you can scrunch up your face as you or if you want, or if you're like me, kind of always feels like your jaw is clenched. So take a deep breath in. And as you breathe out, let go of any tension you're holding in your neck and jaw. Finally, think about the top of your head. So what I want you to do is I want you to scrunch up your shoulders one last time. You can even clench your fists if you like. And then as you release your shoulders, have any remaining tension, just sink down and flow out of you. Wonderful. Take a few more deep breaths. And I want you to enjoy this feeling of relaxation and calm a little bit longer. I'm going to pause for about one minute and I just want you to focus on your breath, focus on breathing in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth, and just fully make sure your body is completely relaxed. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, I want you to slowly begin to deepen your breath. Slowly bring your attention back to where you are. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. And begin noticing the sounds around you. And when you're ready, open your eyes. And then ask, how are you feeling? This is known as a body scan. For those of you who maybe have never done this before, and it is where you focus on and purposefully relax your entire body one area at a time. Um, you can take plenty of time in each body area, allow your clients to relax and de-stress as much as possible. And there are, um, <clears throat> there are things that you can do uh, that take longer. There are longer body scans that you can do. Right. Do we have any questions about that? Um, I always thought that this was a good body scans are good for for clients you know nobody's you're not touching anyone um a lot of times when i was in support group i would notice that my clients or my survivors were were very stressed out uh and this can really help with that at least i would i i hope so all right no, so here is oh sorry go ahead Cal. That's okay. no questions that have come in yet but there was a comment just before you started so this is not in response to your your um, activity but okay I would, I would just say that if you try mindfulness to make sure that you truly really set aside the time for it um they tried it at a previous job with nurses and they had to arrange for coverage for their other patients which made it really stressful to do it <laughs> yeah, you don't want to you don't want to uh, stress out everybody else uh, while you're doing this. So yeah, you would have to set aside time, make sure you have coverage in other areas. Um, I was uh, hoping that you know this would be something that you could do with clients, like in a support group session. Uh, but really, this is something that you could. Body scans are a really common form of mindfulness. Uh, this is something that that you could do that anybody can do. But yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, the person who shared that, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, you you do have to make sure you have, <laughs> you, you don't wanna be stressed out while you're doing it. All so right, guess, so. I guess one question come in, is yoga a good tool for mindfulness? Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, I started doing a yoga class about two months ago and I go to this yoga class three times a week. I know that that is not possible for everyone um, because yoga can be really expensive. Um, but there are yoga sessions on YouTube that you can do um, completely for free. I prefer to go to the classroom, but that I understand that that is a that is definitely a privileged um, statement. I am able to do that. Not everybody's able to do that. But yoga, it, it's. Um, they do something called Shavasana at the end, and it's almost, it can, sometimes it's a guided meditation, sometimes it is just a relaxation technique. Yoga is a, is a great tool to help with your body, and it's also a great tool to help with your, with your mind. I don't know if anybody else has done yoga before. Um, you can feel, I'll be honest, you can feel a little weird when you start out, um, but if you have a really good yoga instructor, they will help you anybody of any body size can do yoga they will help you with modifications um, they will never shame you they will always find different ways that, that you can still participate and never ever ever feel bad about not being able to do a certain pose or not or, or not being able like in my yoga class um we she does handstands all of the time and i cannot do a handstand like it's just it's there's zero chance of me doing a handstand at this point. Um, but she's really, really cool about it. She gives me an alternative activity to do while I've got like three other people doing handstands in the classroom. And I never feel like, uh, like there's something wrong with me or that yoga is not for me. So I would highly recommend um, going on YouTube, finding some basic start, start really start with basic and, um, Yes, I feel like it has done wonders for my mental health in the past two months. Um, and we are doing classes online, actually. I have a, a Google Hangouts. We do Google Hangouts with my yoga instructor. So yes, the short answer is yes. Um, so here are some mindfulness activities for news. Um, you'll have to forgive me. I work with teenagers, so I will add in those kind of uh, 
teenage lingo, I guess. See, I sound like an old person when I say stuff like that, but you guys know what I mean. Uh, the raisin exercise. So it can be used with almost any kind of food. Um, I like to use it with chocolate. Okay, um, but it is called the raisin exercise because that's it, let me bring it up. Okay, so this is how you do it. First thing you're gonna do, you're gonna pretend like you've never seen a raisin before. Or I'll pretend like I've never seen Dove chocolate before, although I've eaten so, so much of it in the past two months. That's called stress eating. Uh, so first what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold it. <clears throat> Take the raisin and hold it in the palm of your hand between your finger and your thumb, okay? And then see it, all right? Take time to really focus on it. Gaze at the raisin with your care, with your full attention. Imagine that this raisin just came from Mars and you've never seen something like this in your life. Let your eyes explore every part of it. Examine the highlights where the light shines, the darker hollows, the folds, the ridges, any asymmetries or unique features, okay? So I'm doing it with my piece of chocolate. I'm going to do that with the little wrappers, the folds and the shiny parts, right? Um, touch it. Turn it over and over between your fingers and explore its texture. Texture. Uh, maybe do this with your eyes closed if that enhances your sense of touch. And then you're going to smell it. Hold the raisin be beneath your nose. And every time you inhale, take in any smell, aroma, or fragrance that, fragrance that may arise. And as you do this, notice anything interesting that may be happening in your mouth and your stomach. So maybe you're smelling that piece of chocolate and you're like, oh, that's going to be in my belly soon. And that brings me joy. Now slowly bring the raisin up to your lips and notice how your hand and your arm know exactly where to position it. Put it in your mouth, don't chew it yet, and just notice how it feels in your mouth. And spend a few breaths just focusing on the sensation of having it in your mouth, exploring it with your tongue. Maybe you have one of those soft squishy raisins, maybe you have one of those harder raisins. <clears throat> just think about how this feels. And then taste it when you're ready. Notice where you need to put it in order to chew. And then take one or two bites. Notice how the flavor bursts in your mouth as you chew. Notice the sensations of the taste and texture in your mouth and how these may change over time. And pay attention to any changes in the object itself. And then when you feel you're ready, swallow it. See if you can first feel like you like the first intention to swallow as it comes up, even as you experience this before you actually swallow it. And then see if you can feel what's left of the raisin uh, moving down your throat into your stomach. Share how your body is feeling after you have completed this exercise. And it seems like a lot, this seems like, it, like I went on forever, but you can do this in the course of 60 seconds or 90 seconds. And I wanted to say, this is, this is a similar exercise. Um, it sounded similar to an exercise that I commonly use to bring survivors out of a flashback. I'm not sure if anybody has experienced this before um, when a survivor is in the flashback, but one of the, some of the things that I've always recommended that they do is feel something um, that's right in front of you, eat a piece of gum or chew on some ice, something that will give you, that will ground you in the moment, that will bring you to the present and make you take the time to actually notice what is happening right now. Um, so it's an exercise to gently guide you back to what you were doing when your mind starts to wander. Um, and then there's the stop technique. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of STOP. Um, at the YWCA, we have a second after school program. It's called Young Women Choosing Action. And that is a mindfulness program. It's a 12 week program to teach young women, um, high school age women uh, mindfulness. 
And one of the most important um, aspects of this is STOP. And I'm gonna explain what STOP uh, means. This is something that you can use in your support groups or uh, with yourself you know, as well. So stop, stop what you're doing and put things down for a moment, all right? The T stands for take, take a few deep breaths. Um, if you wanna extend this, you could take a minute to breathe normally and naturally, follow your breath coming in and out of your nose. You can even say to yourself, breathing in and out. If you're breathing out, if that helps you with your concentration. The O stands for observe. Observe how your, your experience just as it is. So include your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, everything that's happening in the moments. All right. You can notice that these thoughts are not facts and they're not permanent. Notice any emotions uh, that you have in the moment and how they're being expressed in the body. All right. Research shows that just naming your emotions, saying your emotions can turn the volume down on fear, the fear circuit in your brain and can have a calming effect. Then notice your body. Are you standing? Are you sitting? How's your posture? Do you need to rotate any aches or pains? And then proceed. Proceed with something that will support you in the moment. Um, talk to a friend, rub your shoulders have a cup of tea, have your partner rub your shoulders. I've been telling him almost every day, time to come over, rub my shoulders, please, dear. Um, so this is a really uh, good technique that you can use for yourself or you can use with clients. Stop, take a few deep breaths, observe what's going around you, and then proceed. And then breathing mindfulness activities. Oops, sorry. Uh, first thing to make sure you're always sitting comfortable. You don't have to sit up straight, just be comfortable. You can close your eyes or keep them open, whatever you prefer. Um, just breathe through your nose for three seconds and out through your mouth for three seconds. Do this three times in a row. So breathe through your nose, two, three, and out through your mouth, two, three. Just do it three times in a row and see how you feel. Maybe you need to do it for a little bit longer. And then of course, other mindfulness activities, yoga, um, taking a walk, <coughs> just sitting still and observing what is around you. And there are a lot of mindfulness apps that can be downloaded to help you through the day. There are mindfulness apps that can help you. They'll do like a one minute guided meditation or a three minute guided meditation or a five minutes uh, yoga, um, I don't want to say class, but yoga that you can do, yoga exercises that you can do. Um, I would just go on your app store and just start looking at mindfulness and see what would work best for you because sometimes it helps to have that guided meditation rather than just sitting, you know, sitting here and, and hoping that, that I'll be able to get through it. All right, so I am going to finish with a five minute guided meditation. This is just for all of you. And I did find this online, um, so I can email this out if people want it, okay? So I, um, do we have any questions before I begin this final meditation? Nothing else has come in on the um, question line okay. other than someone was asking about the PowerPoint, so I'll let you all know there is a PDF version of it in your handout section. Um, we do not send out the actual PowerPoint because we don't want people um, utilizing the presenter's presentation without their permission. Okay. Uh, All right. so you have Thank you. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> this is our final activity for today. So there's a few things uh, to know before we begin. Um, nothing's going to happen to you. You're not going to float away. You're not going to think of nothing. You're not going to stop your mind. Uh, this is not going to be a mystical or magical experience. And you're also not going to solve all of your problems in these few moments of silence. There's no right or wrong way to practice this. So you are simply just going to sit and breathe. So don't expect anything from this experience, but to sit and breathe. So posture is important. So you, you want to be comfortable and you want to stay awake. Uh, we do have somebody who, who uh, 
we've done mindfulness with and in my office who falls asleep every single time um so you you probably want to sit in a way where you will stay awake but if you fall asleep like i don't mind um so keep your your, your back doesn't have to be completely straight but maybe sit in a chair you can even sit on the floor and cross your legs if you'd like to or you can kind of sit back in your chair but i want you to be comfortable Okay, I don't want you to be thinking through this whole thing like my body hurts, I don't know why I'm doing this. Relax your shoulders, just place your hands gently on your knees, maybe fold a leg underneath you, that's how I always sit, I, I never sit with my feet flat on the ground, I have a, my foot folded underneath me right now. Close your eyes if you're comfortable, but understand, especially when you're working with survivors, they may never want to close their eyes. Um, because that is a very vulnerable feeling. Um, so you can close your eyes if you feel comfortable or not. Uh, breathe through your nose or your mouth. The most important thing is to breathe comfortably. So I will now guide you as we begin this medica meditation. So start with taking three deep breaths. As you settle into a natural rhythm of your breath, knowing throughout the practice, you will you'll hear, hear sounds throughout the room. You're gonna hear sounds outside. These aren't distractions, they're not disruptions. Simply what's happening around us as we sit and breathe. Begin to notice the mind as it wanders, jumping from thought to thought. Gently guide your attention and focus to your stomach as your or your chest. As you breathe in, feel them rise, and breathing out, feel them fall. Simply continue this practice. Just observe the sensation of your breath. Notice your mind as it's wandering. Just release those thoughts, return your attention and focus on your breathing, your natural breathing. Breathing in, follow your breath in. Breathing out, follow your breath out. If 
your mind is starting to water, wander, gently guide your attention back to your breathing. And your mind will wander and that's okay. Let go of any expectations, any judgments you have of what you're doing right now. Just sit and breathe. Whatever you're doing right now is fine. Breathe in, feel your stomach rise. Breathe out, feel your stomach fall. Maybe place your hand on your stomach to feel that. A lot of times we're not comfortable in our stillness. So this is a time where you can really learn to be comfortable and just being still and listening to your breathing. We have one last 30 second pause just to sit and breathe. Make sure if your jaw is clenched that you relax it. Make sure if your shoulders are scrunched up that you relax them. Relax the tension in your back, in your neck. And then one last time, take three deep breaths. If your eyes were closed, slowly open them. Kind of wiggle your fingers and toes, maybe move your head around from side to side, back to back, stretch. I always need to stretch. So what I want you to take away from that is that any sort of quiet or stillness or peacefulness or calm that, or your racing mind, um, it has nothing to do with the sounds that are around us. It has nothing to do with how you sit. It has everything to do with your own mind and how your mind reacts to things. I want you to hold on to that sense of peacefulness, that sense of calmness, and hopefully it, it just isn't an, an escape from reality, um, but it's a way to kind of put things into perception, perspection, not perception, uh, to put things into perspection and to hopefully calm your mind a little bit from everything that is going on because this is one of the this is one of the great challenges that we will ever experience in our lives and mindfulness is a way that we can keep ourselves hopefully keep ourselves grounded and questions or comments and thank you to everybody who listened Thank you, Kelly. That was wonderful. Um, folks, we have a few minutes left. If anyone would like to ask some questions, go ahead and type them in the question box. Um, and thank you all so much for jumping on today. We'll give it a moment to see if anyone has questions. If you guys haven't noticed, I love cats. So all of my pictures, almost all of, I threw a dog in there for some of you dog people. <laughs> but I am, I only have two cats. I'm not that strange strange she's there's one sitting right next to me actually
have a comment that says cats are the best. Yes, that's true. Accurate statement. Thank you for I'm the gonna, webinar. I'm going to eat my chocolate. All right. <laughs> Looks like just a lot of thank yous. Cats are the best. Smiley faces. Awesome. Help me relax from order. Thank you. Thank you. Looks like that's it, Kelly. Just a lot of thank okay. yous. Good work. Um, thank you so All much. Right. Wonderful. And we really appreciate you, everyone joining us today. Thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to share some of this information. So I, I had a good time. Wonderful. Thank you. Bye, everyone. All right. Bye.